What's up everyone? It's your girl Shay here and I'm back with another video for you guys. And for this Saturday's video, it is going to be a review on the movie that I watched on Netflix called A Flavor of Youth, which is actually a movie that I actually talked about on this past Monday's Motivational Monday video where I talked about nostalgia. And the main reason why I did that was because this movie is basically all about nostalgia and looking back on your past. Now I have some notes here regarding the movie because there's a lot of influences in this movie and I want to make sure that I pronounce certain words correctly. Now one of the things I do want to say about this movie A Flavor of Youth is number one you can actually find it on Netflix. This movie is about a little over an hour and a half or not even an hour and a half. It's like an hour and ten minutes. Like it's super duper short and it's told in three different short stories to make up this entire movie. And I did watch it dubbed on Netflix. So they have dubbed and subbed if you're someone that enjoys watching more subbed anime compared to dub. Now the whole thing about this movie is that it is a film that was directed by the same people who did Your Name, but it was a Japanese and Chinese co-production between Comix Wave Fil Films and Howliners Animation League. So it is a combination of both Japanese and also Chinese, and you can heavily tell this influence due to the um, the names that are used and the places that are used during the entire, you know, movie. So one of the first stories is called The Rice Noodles. And this place, take this actual story place, takes place in the Hunan province and in Beijing and is about a gentleman by the name of Zhao Ming who reminisces about his memories with his grandmother through the love of Shan, Shan Jian Noodles. I once again apologize if I am saying any of these words incorrectly. So pretty much in this story, he's reminiscing about rice noodles that he used to eat with his grandmother and how they had a place in their village that had the best rice noodles. Then he also talks about when he got a little bit older, you know, how, you know, different rice noodle places would pop up, but they were never as good as the ones that he basically had with his grandmother and that was a huge reminiscent for him and to me that great talked about how food can be a reminiscent of the past past whether it's someone who made it for you or if it's like a certain like your favorite place that you used to go to and it just talked about the whole thing of just how smells and and and, and things like that can bring about images of your past then the second story is called A Little Fashion Show. And this one takes place in Guangzhou. And it talks about Yi Lin, who is a fashion model, and her younger sister, Lulu. And this story is pretty much how um, Yi Lin is a fashion model. And because of her being a fashion model, she seems to be forgetting a lot about her sister, Lulu. And her, for her, what was reminiscent for her in her past was the clothes that her her mother used to make for her and her sister. Now I believe their parents have passed away and she took in her younger sister so basically she's her younger sister's sole caregiver and basically it kind of has you know uh, she kind of the fashion model sister kind of falls from her grace as being a fashion model and someone who's younger and more up and coming kind of starts to take her place and so her and her sister kind of end up opening up a you know a store that sells dresses because her sister Lulu starts designing her own clothes and making her own clothes and in her past she thinks about when her mom made her and her younger sister these red dresses because red was her favorite color or is her favorite color and I once again really enjoyed this story although for this one I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one but I still did enjoy the aspect of seeing these two sisters kind of fall apart and then also come together through these dresses and through fashion. The last story was called Love in Shanghai and this one takes place in the Shiku Shikuman in Shanghai and it takes place in between 1999 to modern day because this has a lot of flashbacks in it and basically it's about a young man by the name of Li Mo and his friend Zhao Yu and him and uh, Zhao Yu are friends and Zhao Yu decides to try and get into an elite 
high school and Lee Mo, who kind of doesn't want to end up being left behind, starts trying to get into this high school with her. Now, him and um, Zhao Yu communicate with each other through cassette tapes and they would basically record stuff on cassette tapes and then give them to each other and then do responses and it was like a cool way of like not using the phone and just talking back and forth with each other and the reason why I started doing this was because Zhao Yu ends up getting injured in just her leg and so that's what they decided to do to communicate with each other while she wasn't able to be at school and in this story with them taking this test his friend decides, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but it ends up that there's a tape that she makes and she gives to him, but he never actually listens to. And the entire premise of this story is him trying to find a cassette player to play this tape from his friend so he could find out what his friend actually said because he never listened to it because he was so immersed in trying to study for these exams. And I have to say that this story was the most, like, saddest one I kind of have to say because this is one that I also kind of feel like a lot of people can relate to where it's like if they're not listening to a message or not reading a letter or something and I know a lot of us have had to like record stuff on cassette tapes so that's why for me like this one kind of was uh kind of related to me a little bit more but overall out of all the stories that uh they had on this entire anime my favorite was the very first one and the main reason why the first one was my very favorite was because because of the main character reminiscing about rice noodles and how he used to have them with his grandmother and it also showed the closeness that him and his grandmother share i really it really made me think of my own grandparents my own grandmother because i was also very close with my grandmother with my grandparents and food was something that was very prevalent in my grandmother's household she cooked a lot of food she had a lot of different recipes and Thanksgiving and Christmas and just any time year round she would cook certain dishes and now to this day food is something that greatly makes me remember her there are other aspects that make me remember her also but food is definitely a big one and so certain you know smells that I smell like for me it's like cornbread and and you know eating collard greens and stuff like that really reminds me of my grandmother it makes me reminisce of the days of when my grandma used to cook a big pot of collard greens on Sundays for for Sunday dinner after church or you know making her cornbread and even now to this day I'm very picky about the cornbread that I eat because her cornbread was so good but that's what it makes me think of it makes me think of those childhood times of mine or even beyond childhood when I was in college when she was still alive since at this point she has passed away um, it really makes me think of that. So for me, the first story I related to so much because it reminded me of my grandmother. But overall, this entire anime was great at having you, the viewer, think of things in your past or think of nostalgia in your past or think of certain elements in today's modern times that will take you back to those fun times in your past or in some of the two of those two out of the three stories the sad moments of your past and even with the last one maybe even some regret that you have in your past so that's what it really really made me think of and so I definitely highly recommend uh, watching it and to me I really enjoyed the elements of both Japanese and Chinese elements that were put into this into this movie because I didn't realize that this was co-produced with both the Japanese and a Chinese company and I love the aspect that uh, all of these stories took place somewhere within China. So that was something I greatly enjoyed and also for those of you guys who speak Mandarin, uh, the, the movie is also done in Mandarin as well. So I thought that was great because not many you know anime that we know are dubbed or are done also in mandarin so i thought that was great as well so i definitely recommend it so once again if you have not seen this it is on netflix it is called a flavor of youth they have it in three different languages english japanese and also in mandarin so if you speak any of those languages or understand any of them you can definitely you know watch them in in those languages or you can even watch it subtitled if you're someone that prefers that over watching it dubbed in English. I know for me I watched it English dubbed and the English dub was absolutely amazing and I definitely definitely recommend checking it out. So if you've seen this let me know what you thought of it. Comment down below if you haven't seen it 
are you interested now in watching it because i know that for me i can honestly say that when this movie being on netflix i originally kind of bypassed it and then i kind of ended up going back to it because i was like this looks interesting which is you know why i ended up watching it but let me know what you guys think. Of course, like always, I will have links down below to all my social media accounts, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my blog as well. So of course, please check me out on there and follow me if you like. Of course, like always, please give this video a thumbs up, share it, comment, do whatever you like. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already, especially because I know so many of you guys have been watching my videos. And so please subscribe. And of course, please click the bell icon so you know if I want to come out with new videos, which are every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So please check me out on there as well. But that's all I have for you guys. I have a new video for you guys on Monday, which is once again one of my motivational Monday videos with a little bit of a twist. So I hope you guys check that out as well. And I will see you guys soon with a new video. All right, you guys, like I always tell you guys, stay positive and be nerdy. All right, you guys.